Hey there creepy peeps, my name is Nightmare Maven and I love talking about horror movies which means I've also been known to get into a horror debate or two, all in good fun of course. If you're new here, hi, hello, welcome, so glad you found me and for those of you that are returning, welcome back. So I'm no stranger to talking about controversial topics in the horror genre or talking about controversial or offensive movies. And like I said, it's all in good fun usually, but I know that some horror fans, not anybody in our little community here, but some horror fans can get um, heated, putting it mildly, <laughs> over certain topics. I'm proud of our little space where we can usually discuss things in a respectful way. You know, whether we agree or not, newer horror movies may bring up new discussions and new arguments, but there are certain debates that we are always having in the horror community. So I was trying to look for some video ideas. I was taking a spin on the old World Wide Web and I came across this older article on Cinema Blend, which will be linked in the description. And it was titled, Eight Arguments Horror Fans Will Never Stop Having. And I thought it would be fun to go through each one of the arguments brought up in the article and I'll give you my thoughts on them. And of course, I wanna hear what you guys think in the comments. I'm sure you guys are used to it by now, but please just ignore Daisy because it's gonna take me like way too fucking long to finish the video if I have to wait for her to stop barking at the squirrel or the leaf or something that just fell in our yard. Who knows? First debate mentioned in the article is which is scarier, fast zombies or slow zombies? So in the past, I'm almost positive that I would have just answered fast zombies and that would have been the end of it. But now that I think about it more, I'm gonna go with slow zombies and I'll explain. So if I were in a fast zombie situation, it would definitely still be scary. There's no denying that. But but I already know that I wouldn't stand a chance. Like unless I somehow already happened to be in a like super well fortified, very well stocked, like stronghold, <laughs> like I'm just gonna give up. <laughs> Like, look at me, like I can't outrun a fast zombie. Slow zombies, however, would lull me into like a false sense of security and confidence because like one or two slow zombies, I can definitely outrun. I'm almost positive I would become complacent and lazy, kind of like the survivors that are like hanging out in the mall in Dawn of the Dead, which would give the slow zombies plenty of time to grow in numbers and to gather. Like one or two slow zombies, not scary. A whole horde of slow zombies slowly eating you alive definitely scary. In the article, it looks like the, the writer is defining shock as like gore, gratuitous violence, and jump scares. I'm not gonna lie, I was kind of a little bit torn on this one because I, <laughs> because I usually don't mind either. Like I really love a good like slow burning, like, tense movie. I also don't mind the, the faster paced, gore fest it just really depends on the mood i'm in i guess the only thing that would sway me one direction or the other is the jump scares i think a few are fine but when a movie solely relies on cranking the volume suddenly to give the audience a physical jolt then you've lost me so i'm gonna have to go with uh, tension on this one tale as old as time the good old freddy versus jason debate i'm sure i've answered this question before and my answer is gonna remain the same, both. <laughs> the article seems to be answering the question in the context of which is scarier. Although I've also seen this debate in the context of which would you rather be killed by, and that's why I answer both. <laughs> so if the question is who would I rather be killed by, the answer is always Jason. He's a big strong dude, he doesn't beat around the bush, he's just gonna kill you straight away and be done with you. Freddy though is definitely the scarier of the two because he exploits one of like the simplest and yet one of our most essential needs as human beings, sleep. Lack of sleep is gonna wear you down both physically and mentally. So the longer you manage to hold Freddy off, the weaker you're gonna become. Meaning you'll be living in terror and just <laughs> exhaustion for who knows how long before he finally gets you. So for this debate, the article seems to be asking in the context of which is the more influential director. I'm gonna try and answer it in that sense because if it comes down to personal preference, which most of these debates do, <laughs> it's gonna be Wes Craven in a landslide. But I think I'm still gonna go with Wes Craven for most influential. Honestly, it's really just 
splitting hairs in a serious sense and not just for a fun video i don't think this is worth a debate because i think both directors have irrevocably changed the horror genre for the good i don't think there's any use in trying to decide who actually influenced the genre the most. But for the sake of this fun video, when it comes to influence, I think John Carpenter's heaviest hitter, of course, is Halloween. He has a bunch of other great movies, but I think when it comes to like his influence in the horror genre, I think Halloween is his like one strongest movie. Maybe, maybe followed by The Thing. Craven not only influenced one of the big three, Freddy with A Nightmare on Elm Street. Uh, he was also a heavy hitter in the exploitation genre and he completely revived the horror genre by perfecting meta slashers with the Scream franchise. So my personal take is Wes Craven. Like any horror trend, when early entries to the found footage genre hit, filmmakers absolutely ran with it. I think found footage's biggest downfall is probably the the focus on technology the fact that you know we're aware of the camera the camera is a character i think in that sense um a lot of these movies get outdated really really fast and as you know a, a generation of people that <laughs> grew up with technology and use technology in our day-to-day -day lives i feel like not much surprises us in that arena but i think as technology progresses there will forever be like a teensy weensy bit of wiggle room made in the found footage genre for something new uh to come in but i feel like it's only ever good like once or twice and then it gets old um so movies like unfriended and more recently host have managed to play on a new detail that that somehow keeps found footage alive i wouldn't say that found footage is completely irrelevant i would more likely answer that it's just barely relevant it just manages to stay relevant Oh, this debate. <laughs> this is probably the one I see the most, especially on horror Twitter, which can be a very scary place. People get really heated over this one on horror Twitter, like damn. From a business standpoint, of course, the answer is yes, it's the best thing to happen to the horror genre. The end game for the, the studios is more butts in the seats, more tickets sold, so. And PG-13 means more people can go see the movie the proper way, which is buying those pricey movie tickets. <laughs> but as a horror fan, I think I would also say PG-13 is, is a good thing in the horror genre. I've admitted many times in many a video, my friends and I used to sneak into so many R-rated horror movies. And as fun as that is, it's always a little bit nerve wracking to do that because you could get caught. If you get caught enough times, you could get banned from the movie theater. So my friends and I ate PG-13 horror movies up back in the day. <laughs> sure, they were jump scare fast, but that was kind of part of the fun when you're with a group. I never minded it as much as I do now. And those PG-13 horror movies that were very easily accessible to me as a, as a teenager were my gateway to being here right now on this channel. So I will never, ever shit talk PG-13 horror movies. <laughs> Ah, remakes, or remakes. Um, short answer to this, no. <laughs> of course not, like no matter how many times a, a movie is remade, the original still exists. You can still watch the original. As passionate as us horror fans are every time we a new remake gets announced, everybody talks about how good the original is, how much better the original is. But like the originals are never gonna be like forgotten or not talked about, you know? Sure, there are a lot of remakes that are clear cash grabs and nothing more, like capitalism fucking sucks, we all know this. No one is forcing you to see the remake. <laughs> if your first reaction to hearing about a new remake is like disdain and hate, just don't watch it, just watch the original. Honestly, don't see how that would ruin your enjoyment of the original at all. And finally, who is the best among the traumatized female horror character? <laughs> Kind of like the, the Carpenter and Craven debate, like I could go back and forth on this indefinitely. It's just, once again, it's just splitting hairs like down to like 
the tiniest atom. When this debate all just comes down to personal preference. <laughs> There's too many criteria you could judge on honestly and I don't even know like how you would compare them fairly because there are some Scream Queens that have been in a lot more movies than others. And some of them have like various different timelines so how are you gonna judge? I, I feel like it would be impossible to put them all on a level playing field when again it all just comes down to who you like more. <laughs> so like I like Sydney the best. I like, like <laughs> whatever your favorite is. That's the correct answer to this. <laughs> so those are apparently eight topics in the horror genre that us fans will never stop arguing over. If there's any more that you feel like you see constantly, let me know what those debates are in the comments. Maybe, maybe I can do a part two to this, who knows? And of course, please leave your answers to these debates in the comment section down below and show your work. I wanna see, <laughs> I wanna hear your reasoning for why you feel a certain way about these. Yeah. I, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new here. Become a creepy peep today. I post two new videos a week. So I'll see you soon with a new video. Until then, stay strange. Bye.